Yeah. What are you doing? <clears throat> you three, Byron, Dumaine, Longueville, have sworn for three years' term to live with me, my fellow scholars, and to keep those statutes that are recorded in this schedule here. Your oaths are passed, and now subscribe your names that his own hand may strike his honor down that violates the smallest branch herein. If you are armed to do what sworn to do, subscribe to your deep oaths and keep it too. in their lives live registered upon our brazen tombs and then grace us in the disgrace of death when spite of cormorant devouring time the endeavor of this present breath may buy that honor which shall bait his skite's keen edge and make us heirs of all eternity therefore brave conquerors for so you are that war against your own affections and the huge army of the world's desires our late edict shall strongly stand in force. Navarre shall be the wonder of the world. Our court shall be a little academe, still in contemplative and living art. Here comes Boyette. Under the cool shade of a sycamore, I thought to close mine eyes some half an hour, when, lo, to interrupt my purposed rest toward the shade, I might behold addressed the king and his companions. Warily I stole into a neighbor thicket by, and overheard what you shall overhear, that by and by, disguised they will be here. Their herald is a pretty knavish page, that well by heart hath conned his embassage. Action and accent did they teach him there, thus must thou speak, and thus thy body bear. And ever and anon they made him doubt, presence majestical would put him out, for, quoth the king, an angel shalt thou see, yet fear not thou, but speak audaciously. The boy replied, an angel is not evil, I should have feared her had she been a devil. With that, all laughed and clapped him on the shoulder, making the bold wag by their praises bolder. One rubbed his elbow thus, and fleer and swore, a better speech was never spoke before. Another, with his finger and his thumb, cried, Via, we will do it, come what will come. The third he capered, and cried, All goes well, the fourth turned on the toe, and down he fell. With that, they all did tumble to the ground, with such a zealous laughter so profound that in this spleen ridiculous appears, to check their folly, passion's solemn tears. Spirits, 
Consider who the king your father is. Your father sent, to whom he sent, and what's his embassy? Yourself. How precious in all the world to seem to parley with the soul and hair of all perfections that a man may, oh, matchless Navarre. The plea of no less weight than Aquitaine, a dowry for a queen, be now as prodigal of all dear grace as, as nature was in making graces dear. When she did starve the general world beside and prodigally gave them all to you. Good Lord Royette, my beauty, though but mean, needs not the painted flourish of your praise. Beauty is brought by judgment of the eye, not uttered by base sail, which happens tongues. I am less proud to hear you tell me I'm less proud to hear you tell my worth than you, much willing to be counted wise, and spending your wit in praise of mine. But now, to task the tasker. Good boy, yet you are not ignorant, tall telling fame doth noise abroad. Navarre hath made a vow. His painful study shall to wear three years, no woman may approach his silent court. Therefore, to seemeth it a needed course, before we enter his forbidden gates to know his pleasure, and in that behalf, bold of your worthiness, we single you as our best moving fair solicitor. Tell him, the daughter of the King of France, on serious business, craving quick dispatch and fortune's personal conference with his grace. Haste, signifies so much when we attend like humble visaged suitors, as I will. Proud of employment, willingly I go. All pride is willing, pride, and yours is so. Who are the votaries, my loving lord, that are vow fellows with this virtuous duke? Oh, lord Longville is one. Know you the man? I know him, madam. At a marriage feast between Lord Paragord and the beauteous heir of Jock Falconbridge, solemnized in Normandy, I saw this fellow, saw I Longville. A man of sovereign parts he is, esteemed, well fitted in arts, glorious in arms, nothing becomes him ill like he would tell. The only soil of his fair virtue's gloss, if virtue's gloss will stain, with any soil is a sharp wit matched with too blunt a will, whose edge hath power to cut, whose will still wills. It should none spare that come within his power. Some merry mocking lord be like it so. They say so most that most his humors know. Such short lived do wither as they grow. Who are the rest? The young Jumain, a well accomplished youth, <laughs> of all that virtue loved, for virtue loved. Most power to do most harm, least ill knowing, for he hath wit to make an ill shape good, and shape to win grace, though he hath no wit. I saw him at Duke Alarcon's once, and much too little of that I saw, and is my report to his great worthiness. Another of these students at the time was there with him, if I have heard it truth. Baron, they called him. But a merrier man within the limit of becoming mirth, I never spent an hour's talk with all. His eye begets occasion for his wit, for every object that the one doth catch the other turns to a mirth-moving jest, which his fair tongue conceits as expositor, delivers in such apt and gracious words that aged ears play truant at his tales. And younger hearings are quite ravished, so sweet and voluble is his discourse. <laughs> God bless my ladies. Are they all in love? That every one her own hath garnished with such bedecking ornaments of praise. Here comes Boyette. <laughs> now what admittance, Lord? Navarre had notice of your fair approach, and he is his, and his competitors in oath were all addressed to meet you, gentle lady, before I came. Mary, thus much I have learnt, he rather means to lodge you in a field, like one that comes here to besiege his court and seek a dispensation for his oath to let you enter his unpeopled house. Here comes Navarre. Here princess, welcome to the court of Navarre. Fair, I give you back again, and welcome I have not yet. The roof of this court is too high to be yours, and welcome to the wide fields too wide to be mine. Hear me, madam, you are welcome to my court. I will be welcome, then. Conduct me thither. Hear me, dear lady, I have sworn an oath. Our lady help my lord, it will be forsworn. Not for the world, fair madam, by my will. Why, will shall break it, will and nothing else. Your ladyship is ignorant of what is. Were my lord so, his ignorance were wise, for now his knowledge must prove ignorance. I hear your grace hath sworn out housekeeping. The steadily sin to keep that oath, my lord, and sin to break it. But pardon me, I am too sudden bold to teach a teacher I see with me. Found safe to read the purpose of my coming and suddenly resolve me in my suit. Madam, I will, if suddenly I may. You will the sooner that I were away. 
real proof for Jared. Oh my gosh. Okay. You and Mitchell. Oh, see, see, my beauty will be saved by merit. Oh, heresy and fair, fit for these days. A giving hand, though foul, shall have fair praise. But come, the bow. Hmm. Now mercy goes to kill, and shooting well is then accounted ill. Thus will I save in my credit in the shoot, not wounding. Pity would not have me do it. If wounding, then it was to show my skill that more for praise than purpose meant to kill. And out of question, so it is sometimes glory grows guilty of detested crimes. When, for fame's sake, for praise an outward part, we bend to that the working of the heart. As I, for praise alone, now seek to spill that poor dear's blood, that my heart means no ill. <laughs> I pray you a word. What lady is that saying? Mm, the heir of Alencon. Catherine, her name. A gallant lady. Monsieur, fare you well. I beseech you a word. Who's she on the right? A woman, sometimes. And you saw her in the light. Perhaps light's in the light. I desire her name. Oh, but she hath but one for herself. To desire that were a shame. Pray so, whose daughter? Her mother's, I have heard. God's blessing on your beard, sir. Be not offended, sir. She is an heir of Falconbridge. Nay, my call is Amber. She is a most sweet lady. Not unlike, sir. She may be. What's her name in the cap? Rosaline, my good hap. Is she wedded or no? To her will, sir, or so. You are welcome, sir. Adieu. Farewell to me, sir. Welcome to you. <sighs> so, um, this is a poem I wrote for the princess. By heaven, that thou art fair is most infallible, true. That thou art beauteous, truth itself, that thou art lovely. More fair than fair, beautiful than beauteous, truer than truth itself, have commiseration on thy heroical vassal. The magnanimous and most illustrate King Conhichua set eyes upon the pernicious and indubitable beggar, Zenilophon, and he it was that might rightly say, Veni, Vidi, Vici, which to anathanize in the vulgar, O oh, base and obscure vulgar Vindelesit, he came, saw, and overcame. He came one, saw two, overcame three. Who came? The king. Why did he come? To see. Why did he see? To overcome. To whom came he? To the beggar. What saw he? The beggar. Who overcame he? The beggar. The conclusion is victory. On whose side? The king's. The captive is enriched. On whose side? The beggar's. The catastrophe is a nuptial. On whose side? The king's. No, on both and one, or one and both. I am the king, for so stands the comparison. Thou the beggar, for so witnesseth thy loveliness. Shall I command thy love? I may. Shall I enforce thy love? I could. Shall I entreat thy love? I will. What shalt thou exchange for rags? Robes? For tittles? Titles? For thyself? Me. Thus, expecting thy reply, I profane my lips on thy foot, my eyes on thy picture, and my heart on thy every part. 
thine in the dearest design of industry, Don Adriano de Admao. Thus thou dost hear the Nemean lion roar against thee, thou lamb that standest as his prey. Submissive fall his princely feet before, and he from forge will incline to play. But if thou strive, poor fool, what art thou then? Food for his rage, repasture for his den. Yeah. <laughs> Did. How needless was it then to ask the question? You must not be so quick. It is long that you've been through me with such questions. Your wits to us, it's too fast. It's too tired. Not to leave the rider in the mire. What time of day? Now, fair be thought your mask, fair falls and face the covers, and send you many lovers. Amen. So you be done. Nay. yet come where that and other specialties are bound. You shall have a sight of it tomorrow. It shall suffice me. At which interview all liberal reason I will yield unto. Meantime receive such welcome at my hand as honor without breach of honor may make tender to thy true worthiness. You may not come, fair princess, in my gates, but here without you shall be so received as you shall deem yourself lodged in my heart, though so denied fair harbor in my house. Your own good thoughts excuse me and farewell. Tomorrow shall we visit you again. Sweet health and fair desires consort your grace. Thine own wish, wish I be in every place.
are worse fools to purchase mocking so. That same roan I'll torture ere I go. Oh, that I knew that he were in by the week. How I would make him font and beg and seek and wait the season and observe the times and spend his prodigal wits in bootless rhymes. So pertant like would I oersuade his state that he should be my fool and I his fate. <laughs> Here comes Boyette. Why, all his behaviors did make their retire to the court of his eye, peeping through desire. His heart like an agate with your print impressioned, proud with his form in his eye pride expressed. His tongue all impatient to speak, and Nazi did stumble with haste in his eyesight to be. All senses to that sense did make their repair, to feel only looking on the fairest of fair. Methought all his senses were locked in his eye, as jewels and crystals for some prince to buy, who, tendering their own worth from where they were glass, did point you to buy them along as you passed. His face's own margins did quote such amazes, that all eyes saw his eyes enchanted with gazes. I'll give you Aquitaine and all that is his, and you give him, for my sake, but one loving kiss? The last celebration, Mary Madcap-Lord, not a word to a jest. And every jest but a word. It was well done of you to take him at his word. I was as willing to grapple as he was to board. Two pot sheep's married. And wherefore not ships? No sheep, sweet lamb, unless we so, feed on your lips. You sheep and I pasture, so that end a jest. So you grant pasture for me? <laughs> I'm so gentle, Lord. But it looks not so common. Though several may be. Belonging to who? To my fortune's envy. Good wits will be jangling, a gentle to breathe. So the warm wits will much better use a bar and his bookman, which is a if my observation, which very seldom lies by the parts still rhetoric disclosed with eyes, deceive me not now, the bar is more than one. With that which we lovers entitle our Come to our pavilion, boy, at his disposal. But to speak that in words which that eye hath disclosed, I only have made a mouth to try by adding a tongue which I know will not lie. How are you old love all your he is Cupid's grandfather in words of news of him. And was seen as like a mother. Or a father is a friend. Do you hear my mad wenches? Yeah. What then do you see? You see. Why, I wait to be gone. You are in too hard. Mistresses never come in the rain for fear their color should be washed away. <laughs> for good yours did for sir to tell you plain and find a fair face to not wash it today. I'll prove her fair or talk till doomsday here. <laughs> no devil will fright thee then so much as she. I never knew a man hold vile stuff so dear. <laughs> Look, here's your love. My foot, her face. Oh, if the streets were paved with thine eyes, her feet were much too dainty for such tread. Oh, vile, then as she goes what upward lies, the streets you see she'd walk overhead. But what of this? Are we not all enough? Nothing so sure, and thereby all forsworn. 
Then leave this chat, and good Byron, now prove our loving lawful, and our faith not torn.